helicopter skiing has become one of our higher profile sports simply because of the number of world champions we've had. But there's an area of water skiing that most people don't even realize holds international competitions. Competitive barefoot water skiing began in the early 70s and evolved mostly in Australia. Since then it has become extremely popular in uh, Europe and the States and uh, Australia was very strong for a long time and now uh, both uh, European countries and mostly the United States are, are becoming also very strong. And here in Canada we're starting to, to pick things up. We had a national team at the last World Championships in 1982 and we managed to play sixth out of 13 countries which uh, we were very happy with for a first showing. How come it's taken longer for Canadians to get going in the sport? That's a good question. Um, perhaps it's because uh, there isn't all that much water skiing done in Canada uh, as compared to the States and, uh, and Australia, although we do have some very good uh, water skiers like yourself. Um, we've had some, some excellent uh, water skis in, in classical events. Um, but uh, I think it may have to do with the fact that uh, barefooting is a new sport. It's just starting to develop. Uh, the last four years it has developed uh, tremendously and uh, it's just taking a while for us to catch up. We don't have uh, as much backing uh, financially as uh, the states would have and uh, that's what we're working on now. Obviously, though, the people watching you must really enjoy it. Barefooting has always been one of the big things as far as show skiing goes. How come the competitive isn't taking off as well? There are a few problems associated with watching barefooting. You're going at very high speed, and before they had 20-second runs, so that it's very hard for the spectators to see a whole run. But now they've shortened that down to 15 seconds, so that it's a lot better for the spectators. Now, what kind of events are there in barefoot skiing? There are four events. Three of them are almost identical to classical skiing. They are tricks, uh, jumping, and slalom. And then uh, barefooting also has a fourth event called start methods. Barefooting will have some tricks that are specific to barefooting, like tumble turns, teeth holds, and neck holds. A lot of the tricks that are done on water skis are also done on bare feet, like toe holds, 180 degree turns, uh, 360s, wake turns, toe turns. Like water skiing, there are two runs. In barefooting, they're 15 seconds long, and uh, there are various tricks that can be performed. They're each awarded a certain amount of points, and uh, the skier who obtains the most amount of points during the two runs is the winner of that event. Wake slalom is uh, how many times you can cross the wake. Again, there's two runs of 15 seconds, and you can do one run forward and one run backwards, and uh, you try and cross the wake as many times as you can, and uh, each crossing is worth a certain amount of points. If you cross on one foot, then it's worth more points. So you try and uh, cross the wake on one foot and uh, either forward or backwards and to get more points. Now jumping sounds a little dangerous. I find that dangerous with skis. How can you do it with bare feet? Well, you're right. It, uh, it is dangerous with skis and uh, I guess it's almost as dangerous without them. Uh, it's a much smaller jump in barefooting. It's uh, 18 inches high and six feet long so that uh, you're over it very quickly and the only real danger uh, is if you fall before the jump and hit the jump uh, you can get uh, very badly hurt uh, however um, if you're a good barefooter you won't fall before the jump and uh, you're only allowed to to participate in jumping if if you're qualified to do so um, and also jumping is only performed in extremely good water conditions to try and prevent uh, any accidents and 
I haven't heard of uh, of anybody being hurt badly uh, jumping, except for one person who wasn't a very good barefooter. Do they measure just the distance of the jump then? Yes, uh, distance is what counts. Uh, however, you do have to regain barefoot position before a certain distance as well. What are the different starts that you do? Right now I'm doing a uh, tumble turn start, which is the forward start, and uh, I'm doing a backward step off start, which is stepping off a ski backwards. Now, I, assuming that for this kind of thing and for the other events, you do need certain equipment. To perform in competition, you need a barefoot wetsuit and some shorts to wear underneath, uh, as well as your a trick handle um, that is designed for for barefoot tricks and uh, some step-off skis, and uh, that's about it. A helmet for jumping. What's special about the barefoot wetsuit? It's padded in the uh, rib cage area, the back, and in the rear. And it also uh, has cinches around the legs uh, so that uh, when you're performing starts, the water doesn't go into your wetsuit and uh, bulge up. And uh, wetsuit is worn for protection mostly, uh, especially when you're doing tumble turns or water starts. You need some protection. Now, you've done rather well internationally so far. What's coming up for you this summer? This summer, we're going to have the Eastern Canadian Championships. And then I'm going to go to a competition in the States, the Eastern uh, United States Regionals. And then we have the Canadian Championships uh, the third week of August, uh, hopefully at Leamy Lake, and uh, tentatively sponsored by Carling O'Keefe. We're just waiting for confirmation on that. And uh, there are no World Championships this year. They're only every two years, like in classical water skiing. So I still have a year and a half uh, to train for the next World Championships. How do you feel about competing in barefooting with the kind of recognition you get for it? Is it worth it? Uh, I really love the sport. I think it's great. And uh, I'm really having fun doing it. It keeps me in shape. And uh, I'm going to continue with it for a couple of years for sure. Competitive barefoot skiing has been very popular for a very long time throughout Europe and the United States. It's time that our own sport governing body and Canadians themselves began to recognize it, too. Bill? 